2011 BMW X3 28i with the X Drive. Today we're taking a look at the second generation BMW X3. The X3 was the second model that BMW launched in their X series of crossovers or what they market as sports activity vehicles, SAVs. First they came out with the X5 in the 1990s and then the first generation X3 came out in the early 2000s. This right here is a second generation model of that, the F25. This strategy is something that's clearly worked for BMW because since the introduction of the X5 and the X3, they've really blown out their X portfolio of models. They've gone all gas, no brakes. You've got X1, X2, X3, 5, 6, 7, and an upcoming X8. So today we're gonna evaluate the second generation X3 as a used car proposition. How does it fare against other competitors in its class? How does it fare against maybe a slightly newer version of a more affordable crossover like a CRV or a RAV4? Uh, interior space wise, driving dynamics, reliability, styling inside and out, and how is it as a value in terms of pricing? First thing to talk about, styling. So let's start with the outside. I think personally that the styling of this car has held up pretty well. Um, it's nothing that would set the ground on fire. Do people say that, set the ground on fire? It's nothing that would set the world on fire. It was conservative when it came out, it's still conservative now, and that's probably the reason why it still held up so well. Nothing too flashy was done back when this car first came out, so there's nothing that has aged uh, poorly. It's aged pretty steadily, and it's aged steady pretty well from the outside. The car we're in today, in particular, has this beige, silvery beige paint. Uh, I think that's not the best choice for this car. It makes it look super dull. <laughs> um, and I think a brighter color would have led this car to pop a little bit more and uh, maybe still hold its ground a little bit better when it comes to styling. But overall, I think from the outside, it looks clean. It's classic BMW styling outside. Nothing to really go wrong with. On the inside, I think we could see a similar story. Again, a pretty conservatively styled cabin, which I think for interior design is the best way to go. I mean, it's gonna look good now, it'll look good 10 years from now, and it'll likely good, look good 10 years into the future. The only thing that I think has aged is the infotainment screen, only because this particular version of the X3 has a super small infotainment screen in the middle with these black plastic bezels on each side. And I think with how liberal uh, we've gotten with our screen sizes these days. I mean, everyone loves a big screen. This smaller screen makes the cabin look a little bit dated. But other than the screen, everything else is still pretty current. You have similar styling to what you'd expect in a current day BMW, which is always good news. I mean, BMW iterates very slowly, which is great in terms of making sure that a used car like this stays relevant. One particular thing that I like about this car is the panoramic sunroof. It's huge, it goes right from above my head all the way to the heads of the rear seat passengers and you get a bunch of fresh uh, outside air coming in to create an open airy atmosphere. So definitely love the panoramic sunroof, adds a lot to the interior in my opinion. You know, I think for a car that's, as a model year, that's 10 years old, the interior is held up pretty well in terms of features and amenities. You have heated seats, you have dual zone climate control, you have a version of BMW's iDrive, it's pretty good in here. I mean, there's nothing to really complain about. You even have a heated steering wheel, which I'm in Canada and that's a, that's a terrific feature. I wish more cars had that. While we're on the topic of the interior, let's jump on ahead into practicality. And I think that's the number one area where this car shines the most. This car was based on the 3 Series platform when it first came out. And that car, the 3 Series, is not known to be particularly spacious or roomy. With that being said, this car is supremely comfortable and supremely roomy. I don't know the exact numbers, but when I'm looking at a car's practicality and the comfort, the numbers don't really matter. The numbers can tell you one story, but how it feels is a completely different story. And in the back here with my 5'9", 5'10", body, I have lots of knee room, lots of leg room, and lots of headroom. So really, even if you're, if you're stretching into the six feet area, 
you'd, you'd, you'd be okay. A little bit taller than that, it might be tight, but for anyone underneath that, this is a super spacious, super roomy cabin in the back. In the front here, you can see I'm driving it, and it's a comfortable position. It's a great cruiser, perfect car for road trips, perfect car to just haul miles on the highway. I have my armrest perfectly positioned here, my other armrest perfectly positioned here, both arms on the steering wheel, both hands on the steering wheel, sorry. And uh, I could sit like this for hours. The seat is comfortable, I have lumbar support. I can adjust it a bunch of ways. I can adjust the front of the seat, the back of the seat. I can adjust it like this, up, down. Um, and really, it's, it's just a really comfortable place to sit and drive. The visibility is great all around. You can see here, I have a lot of light coming in. I can see everything. Nice big mirrors, which is, one of my complaints with the 3 Series actually is that the mirrors are a little bit small. And if we're talking about cargo practicality, it's great. Uh, you could put both seats down, 60-40, it'll fold flat, so if you want to put anything bigger in the back, you could do that. If you want to have a little picnic in the back, you can do that. Super practical space in the back for someone who wants to haul around, haul around a lot of stuff, haul around a bunch of family stuff, while also having a comfortable car at the same time. Now, when it comes to driving dynamics, I think that's the area of this car that I've been most disappointed with. When I came into this car, I think I had expectations of this being a BMW, a typical classic BMW. Take a look at my BMW 3 Series review if you want to see what I mean by a typical BMW. You know, precise handling, heavy steering, a lot of communication coming back to you through the wheel. And I, I just, I, I didn't get that from this car. And I know the market is different. It's an SUV, so it's a completely different demographic that they're going after. This is for someone who wants more of a practical car, not so much of a sports car. But I think with something having the BMW badge, I just expected more of that. And my biggest complaint, and I think the reason why this handling isn't super satisfying to me, is because it's just a little floaty and a little bouncy. And that's inherent with an SUV. You can't really get away from that. There's a couple manufacturers that do get away from that, and that's what I expected from BMW. And maybe that's not being super fair to BMW, but that's how I feel about the matter. So handling is where I am the least satisfied with this car. And I think other cars in its class, um, the GLK, which is what the GLC was called back when this car first came out, or the Audi Q5, would likely exhibit similar dynamics. And in all fairness, I believe that this car probably handles better than maybe like a Lexus RX or some other competitors in this class that maybe wouldn't handle even this well. Now if you're someone who doesn't really care about handling and more about ride comfort, it's a completely different story because this is a super smooth car. That floatiness and bounciness that I talked about actually is perfect for going over things like bumps in the road, ruts in the road because you don't really feel a pothole if you're going over a pothole or a bump, it just makes it super smooth. So that's kind of the dichotomy there. If you want something that's uh, nice, sporty handling, then this isn't what you'd gravitate towards. If you want something that is comfortable for you and your family, then this is perfect. Look at how beautiful these roads are, man, they're sick. If only I was in a car that wasn't so floaty, I could enjoy them a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an SUV, so. Now, when it comes to powertrain and fuel economy, in North America, this car came with three primary powertrains or engine choices. Uh, so first of all, a two liter turbo four, a three liter inline six turbocharged, uh, briefly offered a diesel engine with the 28D model. Um, and also for the very first model year, instead of the two liter turbo four, they have the inline six, but naturally aspirated as the base engine. Before I could recommend an engine, let's talk about power and fuel economy because I think they go hand in hand. And when it comes to power, I think if you're someone who appreciates a lot of passing power and ample amounts of power just in your daily driving, then definitely go with the inline six turbocharged. You get 300 horsepower, 300 foot pounds of torque, plenty for your daily driving needs, for passing on the highway. It'll make the car really fun. For everybody else, I think the best option is actually the two liter turbo four for two reasons. Number one, it's plenty of power for, for daily use. You get to a 230, 240-ish 
horsepower, which is great for driving in and around town, for driving to work, commuting back, picking up your kids, anything you'd want an everyday car to do. And secondly, it was a super common, super popular engine across the BMW lineup for a lot of years, for a long time. And that makes it super reliable. People know how to work on it. The problems have all been worked out. I think that that's where some of that extra value lies of going with that engine option. The inline straight six, naturally aspirated and diesel, both interesting cool options. I think in order to get that naturally aspirated inline six, you have to get a super early generation, sorry, a super early model from this generation, which is gonna put you into a significantly older used car. And to get that diesel, I don't know, it just wasn't a very common, very popular car here, so servicing might be an issue. Sometimes finding a gas station that sells diesel is also a bit of an issue, so those are two things to consider. Fuel economy is significantly better on the two liter turbo four. Actually, it's a surprisingly fuel efficient engine. I'll pull up, put some fuel economy information right here. So first, let's take a look at the two liter four. And now let's take a look at the three liter inline turbocharged uh, inline six. So you can see the two liter four is quite a bit better and I think that makes it a better overall choice. So as a used car, should you buy it? I think I have two opinions on the matter. This car's model year was pretty long. It was seven years uh, and I think the real value for this generation of X3 is if you get the latter half of those model years. Reason being, they've depreciated pretty heavily now. You can get some of them for the low 20s where I am in, in Ontario. And for that price, you're getting a, a BMW car. So you're getting the, the, the driving dynamics of a rear wheel drive platform, the niceties that come with the BMW for only a couple thousand more than a similar use RAV4 or use CRV, they would also be around that similar price point. So I think if you're looking at that latter half of this year, maybe 2015, 2016, 2017, then that would be the real sweet spot and that's what I would recommend. For anything older than that, you'd have to be a little bit more wary to make sure you're not getting a high mileage example or getting an example that hasn't been properly taken care of. So be careful if you're getting anything older than 2015. Obviously, there's still a lot of good cars out there for this generation in those years, but just make sure you're getting the right one. So that's my overall review on the F25 second generation X3. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe for more content. Stay tuned. Like, comment. Let me know if you like this X3. Let me know if you think SUVs suck. I know that's a pretty common opinion out there. Um, I think they have their place. They have their value. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. See you next time.